Hi guys, it's Bunny and welcome to a new video and welcome to another WWE reaction. This video was recommended by Rice Cooker. <laughs> Right. Nice name. Can you watch the rise of the Usos 2010 to 2017 or wrestling with Andy's the Usos documentary? And I added to the watch list. So here we go. I did find the one by Wrestle with Andy and it's called Jimmy and Jay, the Uso story full career documentary. And I definitely love these ones because they are like simplified and really easy to catch on and follow. And also for someone who knows nothing, like definitely the best ones to learn more about wrestling. WWE wrestlers. So let's go and check out this video, shall we? Ever since the end of the Attitude Era, tag team wrestling has increasingly become less and less of a focus within WWE to the point where, at times, the division has been little more than an afterthought, with the tag titles often being used as props to heat up singles feuds. That yeah, said, there true. are a few bright stars that have been able to carry tag teams kicking and screaming into the new millennium, true. continuing to wave the flag for it inside of Vince McMahon's promotion, and perhaps tag none team have can been be really done well so if you the find Usos. the right people for it. Yes, over the last decade, the twins from California have been able to routinely put on some of the best matches in the company. All this while playing a major role in arguably the top program in the industry right now, alongside their cousin Roman Reigns. Yeah. But how did they get to this point? Well, join us today as we take a deep dive into their entire career journey in Jimmy and Jay, The Uso Story. Jimmy and Jay. Joshua Samuel Jay. and Jonathan Salofa Fatu were both born on August 22nd, 1985 in San Francisco, Poor California. <laughs> And of course, being twins, the two would be close from the very beginning. Of course. Something which would extend to them sharing many of the same interests growing up. Yeah. Interests that included both football and professional wrestling. Nice. But it should have been it's obvious nice that they, that they have would the be same interested in the latter, as the brothers were already part of one of the most celebrated wrestling dynasties in the world oh, already. Oh, really? The uh, yeah, true. Family, a family that's lineage included the likes of The Rock, Yokozuna, The, the Wilds and Owens, and their father, Rikishi. That said, before they got involved in the world of wrestling themselves, they would spend a period playing football while attending both Escambia High School in Pensacola, Florida, and then later, the University of West Alabama. After Hi. that, and they would both work together at a furniture moving store for a while, all this before a conversation with their gotta uncle, Umaga, convinced them to finally follow their family's footsteps and try out their hands in the ring. That was how, in 2009, they would get a tryout with WWE, with this ultimately going so well that it would lead to the twins both getting signed up to developmental contracts, as from there, they were sent over to Florida Championship <laughs> Wrestling to learn the craft. And living up to their family's reputation then, such fast learners did they end up being that come November 5th of that year, they'd be making their first on-screen appearances, going by the name of the Fatu brothers and quickly managing to pick up Fatu wins against brothers. fellow siblings Duke and Bo Rotunda, the former of whom is better known now to fans as Bray Wyatt. After that, so and they would start an ago. association with fellow Samoan wrestler Donnie Marlowe, with the current New Japan star often being found in their corner at this time, as they continue to rack up wins against the likes of Titus O'Neil <laughs> and Biggie e. Langston. And of course, with all this early success came a lot of additional attention from WWE officials too, hate the who, skin that the is two me. potential stars on their hands, decided to rebrand Joshua and Jonathan around this time, I not touch changing it. their ring names to Jay and Jimmy now. Uso respectively, with this new surname aptly being the Samoan word for brother. But that wasn't all, because on top of that, they would also gain a new manager in the form of fellow future Samoan star Tamina Snuka at this point as well, someone who also had a storied family legacy of their own. So with the act now complete then, the winning streak continued as the Usos would defeat the Fortunate Sons to win the FCW Florida Tag Team titles on the March 13th, 2010 episode of FCW. Okay. And following this, they would successfully defend these belts ago, on a number of guys. occasions over the next few months, fending off future stars like Trent Beretta, Darren Young, Skip Sheffield, and Unico I thought they were like, the uh, they joined the company like Come recently, June 3rd, however, honest. their reign would finally come to an end when they were defeated by Los Aviadores. That said, they needn't have been upset about this because the only reason they'd dropped the belts at all was because they had just recently been moved up to the main roster. Where now, okay. in front of a much larger audience, yeah, that's, that's the good twins for them. could really Upgrade. get a chance to shine for the first time. 
Yes, it Second had been a couple mark. of weeks prior on May 24th that Jay, Jimmy, and Tamina would all make their debuts on Raw as heels by attacking the, at the time, oh, unified WWE here. Tag Team Champions, the Hart Dynasty. Makes sense. And <laughs> after making an impact with this move then, they would cut a promo on the following week's TV, telling the world that they were there to represent their family bloodline and wouldn't stop until they had the respect of everyone around them. But of course, respect nice. must be earned, and yeah. so the trio would set about doing just this. When three days later, however, they would have less success because it was here in a mixed tag match that all three members of the stable would lose to the Hart Dynasty. This Aww. forcing them to take a step back and realize that they still had some ways to go if they wanted to be the best. So regrouping then, they would start training for the rematch on the July 12th episode of Raw. And in the end, it was there, after a hard-fought battle, that Jay would pick up the pinfall over Davey Boy Smith Jr., this earning the Usos a shot at the Tag Team Gold at the July 18th hey! Money in the Bank pay-per-view. Sadly though, when the time for that match came, the brothers would fall short Happen. once again. Oh, no. And from there, they would lose another title shot at oh, the following no. month's Night of Champions, <clears throat> this only adding a further blow to their confidence. Mm. And as it happened, it would continue to get worse before it got better, because come the December 6th episode of Raw, Tamina would have abandoned the brothers as she began her own face turn. <gasps> oh no! So now at a career low then, the Usos now would they're hope alone, to find better luck elsewhere when, they're together. as part of the 2011 draft, they were moved over to SmackDown, with them there turning face themselves as they feuded with the core during their their early face months now. on the blue brand and it was also around this time that they began incorporating the traditional samoan war dance yeah, that's the so siva cool. tau into the ring entrance i love this, this helping man. to energize them before each bout as more often than not they would end up coming out the victors nice sadly though while their careers were on the rise in the ring setbacks would be taking place Why? outside of it as jimmy would be arrested on a drunk driving charge an no! incident that would worryingly continue to recur in the years that followed no, and Jimmy, perhaps as why? punishment for this then, the Usos would spend some time largely away from the main roster towards the end of that year. No, Instead, man. Showing... Imagine like having a twin brother and listen, all your success are intertwined and you are giving your 100% and then your twin brother is doing shiz that can literally affect both of your careers. I'll be mad as F. I hate putting my destiny in someone else's hands and I cannot do shit about it because they can literally, you know, ruin it up in the fifth season of NXT to make the lives of Darren Young and JTG a living hell. And soon seeking revenge for these attacks then, other NXT contestants such as Kurt Hawkins, Tyler Rex, and Titus O'Neil would step up to the plate too, with them each taking on the brothers in different combinations heading into 2012. Come August 15th of that year, however, it would be the Ascension who proved that they had Jay and Jimmy's number when they laid them out after a match. All this before doing the same thing again two weeks later. Hell, on the September 5th episode of NXT, they would even pin the Usos in a match. This just lending a further blow to the Californians as it looked increasingly like their once promising career was fast falling away from them. That was why they must have been relieved then when, come 2013, after having had some largely uneventful appearances on the main roster once more, they would finally get a chance to sink their teeth into something again when on the June 3rd episode of Raw, they would enter into a feud with The Shield over the WWE. In fact, so good were these matches that soon they would be back in the company's good graces, as by the start of 2014, they would go on a winning yeah, streak with this eventually leading to them getting a shot at the by then tag team champions, the New Age Outlaws, okay. on the March 3rd episode of Raw. I cannot the really keep up with everything because like to start losing, their winning, first losing. run on top of the division. I'm trying. And riding this wave of momentum then, the brothers would successfully defend these titles on the WrestleMania pre-show just one month later against Ryback and Curtis Axel, The Real Americans, Ooh, and Los Matadores in a fatal four-way elimination match. Oh my God! After they that, awesome. they would have a they feud with the right. Wyatt family that would see them rack up further defenses at both the Money in the Bank and Battleground pay-per-views in June and July, respectively. Unfortunately, however, it would be at September 21st's Night of Champions that their 202-day reign would finally come to an end oh. when the babyface duo of the Rhodes brothers proved to oh, be Cody. too much for them to handle on that particular night. Dude, Still, they wouldn't yo. stay down for long because by December 29th of that year, they Cody would get now. a nice Christmas present when they regained the belts once more after defeating The Miz and Damian Sandow. And it was also around this time that the two would first associate themselves on screen with Naomi, the very same woman who had been the longtime partner Naomi of Jimmy for years from Royal Rumble, this, right? and who had actually married him that January. Oh. 
okay, Sadly, though, married. this second title run wouldn't last for long as, come March of 2015, Jay suffered a shoulder injury that would take him out of action for the next six months, with Jimmy spending the intervening time working as a commentator and occasional wrestler on main event. Okay. But while his brother was trying to find his place on the roster as a temporary solo star, Jay wouldn't be sitting around the house doing nothing as he would instead be getting married himself, too, to his oh, partner, Takesha Travis, okay, with Takesha. them, like Jimmy and Naomi, still remaining a couple to this day and having oh, two kids together. That's and nice. By November 2nd of I have a feeling that the wrestlers who, like, get married, you don't see a lot of them, like, getting divorced, like other celebrities in Hollywood, like movie stars or singers. It's it's kind of different with WWE. I feel like maybe the reason behind that is that they need some kind of stability in their life and they appreciate having a family and having someone there waiting for them and taking care of their kids because this job requires a lot of traveling but also when you are traveling you are really really working you are really like physically doing so much and working which is also similar to movie stars but i feel like with movie stars if you are just recording a move not just but like if you're recording a movie you're like six months away yes you are working a lot but you are like six months away and then you are back for like six months or a year you have these pauses that are really long but with wrestling it's on the go on the go as long as you are like a part of the team and part of the work you're constantly on the work and constantly working and i feel like they definitely need a bit more stability at least that's how i feel like i don't know maybe what i'm saying is wrong but from what i heard i didn't hear a lot of divorces year now fully healed up, the newlywed would finally be ready to reunite with his brother on screen once again as the two teamed with Dean Ambrose, Ryback, and their cousin mm. Roman Reigns to take For on some Seth reason, Rollins, I love them Owens, together and, the and they're not together now. I want to I want to hear what happened. I feel like I feel like and this documentary will explain this real it. interaction with the new day as it happened, a team that in the years that followed, they would go on to have yeah, a career defining awesome rivalry too. with as the two units often carried the tag team division on their backs. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it's often been one of the biggest complaints of WWE that tag team wrestling, outside of one notable period during the late 90s and early 2000s, often feels like an afterthought, with little effort being given to its booking or its mm. roster of teams. So with the Usos and the New Day both coming to the forefront around this time, they would make it their mission to make tag team wrestling important once more. <laughs> Something. I have a feeling that tag team today is different than tag team back in the day because back in the day these characters they 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 were a bit more serious and they have like real life issues that they also like share and here tag team is more like goofy energetic they'll give you the performance but like mm, you know the story in between and their relationship between each other like what is going on so maybe that's why today we they're not together let's see that they would begin doing at the January 24th, 2016 Royal Rumble, when they faced off over the WWE Tag Team titles, with the New Day ultimately picking up the win in this one. After that then, the Cali Boys would start a feud with the Dudley Boys that climaxed in them picking up a victory over the ECW legends during the WrestleMania 32 pre-show. Following this, it would be back to business as usual though, as they started to pick off the full-time roster one by one once more beginning with the social outcasts on the April 11th episode of Raw, and then moving on to the Good Brothers from there as, on the May 2nd episode of Raw, they once again teamed with their cousin Roman Reigns Roman to Reigns. take on Gallows, Anderson, and AJ Styles in a six-man tag match. Oh. But despite putting on a strong effort here, the Samoan trio would end up losing this match. Oh. And to make matters worse, the Usos would also lose their straight-up tag match against the Good Brothers at May 22nd's Extreme Rules, oh. this leaving them once again stuck in a rut. So perhaps it was a good thing that, on July 19th of that year, really they started their there. claim of being the dominant force in the Blue Brands tag yeah. division. Now it's heel again. And with this Works change in attitude better, huh? came a change in look too, I as now dropping the more traditional tribal elements of their character, Jay and Jimmy would morph into more street-like thugs, proclaiming that they had always been down since day one-ish, and were now able to show oh, it no. fully as they started a feud with American Alpha leading into 2017. What was that what they were wearing? And come that March 21st of one. that year, <clears throat> this feud would even see the Twins defeat the rivals to win the SmackDown Tag Team Championships, with okay, this making cool. them the first ever team to win both the Red and Blue Brands titles. So yeah. seeking to go on another lengthy run then, they started racking up successful oh. defenses against the likes of Breezango. Unfortunately, though, it would be their arch foes, the New Day, who would end things this time, as it was at July 23rd's Hi, Battleground that, day. after having yet another banger together, everyone's favorite trio would defeat the Usos to take home the gold. 
That wouldn't be the end of things, however, because from there, the brothers would invoke the rematch clause, mm. continuing on the feud for the next couple of months Butios. then, as the two teams <laughs> continued to wage war. And this would all cereal? climax in the first ever tag team Hell in a Cell match at October 8th's titular pay-per-view, with both the Usos and the New Day there, putting on one of the best tag matches seen inside a WWE ring for years as, come the end of it, the Cali boys would have regained their titles once more. But now having a newfound respect for their rivals, the brothers would turn babyface on the following episode of SmackDown by telling the New Day that they respected them and hoped to have more battles with them in the future. And so now, formally okay. on the side of the good guys, they would put on further classics leading into the new year against the likes of The Bar, Chad Gable and Shelton Benjamin, and Rusev and Aiden English. After that, come WrestleMania 34 on April 8, 2018, they would get to appear on the main show for the first time in their careers, there defending their titles against both The New Day and The Bludgeon Brothers, with the latter team of heavyweights coming out the victors by the end of this one. Still, defeat or they not, look so it cool. was a major like milestone checked off for the duo regardless, and a well-deserved one at that. By finally getting themselves a spot on the main card at a WrestleMania, it showed that, that the Usos had painful. forced WWE to take the tag division just a little more seriously than it had been doing. Okay. And they would continue to prove their worth and the worth of the division as a whole going forward from there then, as they had memorable matches against teams such as really the cool, Brothers, man. The Bar, and even Team Tone, Hell No Big over the remainder of the really year. Handsome. That said, it wasn't until 2019 nice that they would years. once again re-enter the title picture as it was in February of that year at Elimination Chamber that they defeated Shane McMahon and The Miz to start their fourth run as SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Yay! After that, and they would show further love to The New Day when, what is it? during a gauntlet match a designed to make it near impossible for Kofi <laughs> Kingston to get his WrestleMania 35 <laughs> WWE title shot against Daniel it. Bryan, the new tag champions would forfeit their spot in the bout, effectively giving Xavier Woods and Big E a bye and making their eventual victory oh, we can that see much it easier. As a storyline punishment for this, however, they would get placed into a fatal four-way match at the Showcase of the Immortals later that month, mm -hmm. where they had to defend against not only The Bar, but Aleister Black and Ricochet, cool. and Shinsuke Nakamura and Rusev, good, good, too. Uh, uh, and though they would wrestlers. end up winning this one, the whole thing wore them out so much that, Ooh. come the next episode of SmackDown on April 9th, they'd be left easy pickings for the Hardy Boys, as the Carolina Brothers started their latest reign on top. So, hoping to find better successes elsewhere once again then, the now former yeah. champions would move over to Raw during the 2019 draft. Okay. They're starting a program with the Revival, while also, as a consequence of the new wildcard rule that had been put in place by the McMahons, the returning to the blue brand to simultaneously have a feud with Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan. Sadly though, after Jimmy no. was arrested for a DUI yet again in July of 2019, mm. the two would be written off of TV for a period as punishment for this. Jimmy! And not being seen again until January 3rd, 2020, at which point they would return full-time to the SmackDown brand and align themselves with Roman Reigns as, together, the trio became known as the Bloodline. And as a unit, the Bloodline would quickly Jimmy enter a program with King Corbin, Dolph Ziggler, and Bobby Roode usually getting the better of the heels here, <laughs> what the and at one point, man? even showering Ew. Corbin in dog food. Ew, Unfortunately, that doesn't even look like dog food, that looks short, like poop. However, poo. when, at that March's WrestleMania, the one held in front of no fans, Jimmy would suffer a knee injury during his match, this putting him out of action indefinitely, and leaving Jay to go on as a solo act for the oh, first time in his back. career. Jimmy again! <laughs> Yes, at this point, Roman Reigns had also taken his, his own fault, sabbatical, okay. and so now, with none of his family around Sad. him then, Jay would enter into a battle royal to determine the new number one contender. <gasps> do you think this was the moment when Jay realized that he can do it alone? The Intercontinental title on the May 29th episode of SmackDown. After failing to win this, though, he would remain away from TV until September, at which point he would quickly earn himself a shot at his cousin Roman's universal title, with the added wrinkle to the story now being that the champ had recently turned heel and that, not being happy with this change in attitude, Jay ah. hoped to bring him back to the side of the light, oh, so while also Jay proving that he had it in him to face? be a singles Roman champion Reign himself. Is a heel yes, and... in the lead-up to the biggest match of his career, the number one contender would aptly cut the promo of his career when he passionately spoke about why he was more than just half of the Usos and why he deserved all the respect he was due. And under normal circumstances, this may have even led to a big babyface title win for him, but unfortunately, this was right at the beginning of the Tribal Chiefs' run on top, so no one was going to get the better of him oh, no. for a long time yet. 
Okay. Still, the two would put on an excellent match at September 27th's Clash of Champions regardless, with Jay doing more than enough there to prove that he was every bit as deserving of the respect he wanted. In the end, though, it would be his returning <laughs> brother it. Jimmy who would seal his fate that night as, Jackson. after Roman had Jay locked in a guillotine, Jimmy would be forced to throw in the towel so as to oh. end things before his twin could get hurt. Okay. That said, this performance would be enough to earn Jay a rematch at the following month's Hell in a Cell where, this time, inside the cell itself, the two would put on another banger, continuing on with arguably Ooh. the best storyline in the industry at that point as Roman would force his cousin to tap out acknowledging him as the head of the table in the process, and from there, oh my God, forcing Jay to become cool. the full-time lackey to the champ, backing him up at all turns and helping him to keep hold of his precious title. And while Jimmy would at first be reluctant to follow his brother down this path of servitude, soon he would join in as well, as now, Not fully reunited once more, the bloodline reigned dominant over SmackDown, with Roman Reigns continuing to hold on to the Universal title, all while elsewhere, the Usos were starting their fifth reign as the Blue Brands Tag Team Champions okay. after beating the Mysterios at August 21st SummerSlam. And as it stands right now, that's how things remain. No, the Usos I don't have think never so. been in a stronger position, with them now being fully a part of the biggest angle no, of the company I didn't and firmly see establishing that. themselves as arguably this the best tag ago. team of their generation in the I'm process. Hit that a team that has achieved just about everything they can and then some, and who have, yeah, along have with the really New Day, good. largely contributed towards keeping the division alive when no one in management seemed to care about it. And what makes I this all the more impressive friends, is that, uh, like, at just 36 years arena. old, the two still have plenty of years left in them. So what will the future yeah, hold for so Jay and Jimmy? Too. Well, that's up to them because they've long since proven by now that whatever they set their sights on, they'll achieve it. And that's been undeniable ever since day one. Well, guys, what did you think of the video? Let us know in the okay, comments below. Okay, that was an amazing video. Don't forget video. to smash the like button. I did get lost with the part where they were like winning and losing and winning and losing, going back and forth and back and forth. I, I, I lost that part, but I would say the end of the video, like not the end, the end, but like, let's say from 70% till 100, I, it was really, really good. And I understood it. And this is like the most relevant thing right now for this whole Uso story. Although I think we have some things that happened during these two years since this video was uploaded because they're not together you guys i saw there was beef between them so i'm trying to find like i'm gonna sort the comments to the newest ones can't believe that the bloodline storyline was actually supposed to start in 2019 what is the bloodline storyline is this that like he mentioned it also here uh but what i understood is that they're all were fighting for the best wrestler in the in the family and they were trying to prove themselves as the best in the family so they have like beef between each other at the same time with other people it seems jimmy always in trouble always gets arrested yeah all right um i wish you guys have maybe any recommendations or any videos that you can recommend me in the comment down below so i can keep up with the storyline i really need more about this and i think it's very relevant right now and i need to know more so let me know in the comments if there is any other video that you would like me to react to related to the Usus or the, the Bloodline storyline itself. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. And if you want to share extra love, then you can go to the share button and copy the link. You don't have to share it anywhere. Just copying it helps a lot because it gets into the analysis and algorithm of the YouTube channel. And, and yeah, we can trick YouTube into thinking that we're more relevant, you know. <laughs> so we can get more subs and more people in the community itself. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Bye!